Hi, as promised in my teaser video of the unboxing, I was just so excited to get the Electrum uh, that I just wanted to at least show it to everyone before I could actually give you a walkthrough review. I wanted to be able to at least have it for a little bit and write it quite a few times before I gave my honest opinion and feedback. Now this is still an early feedback and opinion of the Electrum. I've only had it for about a month. I haven't been able to ride it every day because it's still a little cold out. Anything above 35 and above I'll ride. Uh, anything below 35, just I don't wanna worry about anything frozen on the road and or on the trail. Uh, a lot harder to see on the trail, especially when it's dark out. Uh, but anyway, uh, this walkthrough I'll go through as much as possible. I'll point out what I like and some of the improvements I'd like to see made. Uh, but if you don't want to sit through it all, <laughs> my uh, early impression and opinion of the Electrum is it's the best commuted, commuter electric bicycle that I've had, or human-insisted bicycle, I should say, since your power isn't going straight to the wheel, your pedaling power is going to a hub generator, essentially, which is helping feed the batteries. Uh, so. With, with that said, uh, I would highly recommend it if you've been following the build of the Electrum in the iterations that TIG has gone through with it, and you've thought, wow, that's really nice, wow, that's kind of expensive, it's going to be worth every penny. This meets everything I would want out of an electric bike and a commuter bike. Uh, the uh, and, and before I get into the deep dive and, and kind of walk you around everything, uh, I will say I've had a few different style bikes for commuting. I've, I've gone analog, right? Just traditional bicycle and, and commuted not too far, you know, 10 miles round trip at the time. And, uh, you know, that's great. Uh, but you show up to work maybe sweaty, you got to take a shower, you get home, you're sweaty, you got to take a shower, you know, and, and that's fine. It's a, it's a good workout. Uh, I switched to an electric bike years back. I've also had a Velomobile. I really loved my Velomobile. The problem with the Velomobile is maneuverability, uh, getting on and off trails because I don't use all trails. I have to use roads and trails. Uh, being on the road, you're really low in a Velomobile. There was a few close calls, but for the most part, uh, people were courteous. Uh, the Velomobile also, you had to gear up. You had to wear cycling clothes. You had to clip in, you know, to get a really good ride and really good push on those. Um, there are people that use Velomobiles as their daily commuter, daily car, their, their car replacement, and that's great. I just didn't like it in the summer, it'd get too hot. In the winter, it was so cold, things would fog up. It, it, it had its pros and cons. Velomobiles are great. Don't, I'm not knocking them at all uh, for those Velomobile lovers out there. This is not a Velomobile because it's human assisted and you're going to have to have the electric on it. Uh, so I don't classify this as a Velomobile per se. I classify this as a human assisted vehicle or an electric bicycle, whichever way you want to call it. Um, so, you know, that's what I didn't like about the Velomobile. I wanted something I could wear what I'm wearing now, just head out to the grocery store, run over there, run over here, commute to work, commute home, and, and, and be comfortable doing it. Uh, and the electric bikes out there, you know, they all love to tout, oh, it's got this much range on the perfect day, on the flat surface, uh, with um, you know <laughs> the, the lowest setting that will get you those best uh, rates. So electric bicycles never live up to the hype that they, they make them um, sound like they're going to have for range. Uh, I've had bikes with two battery packs, and even then, especially in the colder temps, it, you know, it was a, I would have to charge up when I was at work, which is fine, and they work. But you also didn't have any kind of protection from the weather or the elements either. Uh, I also ride recumbent and I don't like uprights. Uh, so I've tried those. I've also had, um, I, for a brief moment in, in another video, I reviewed the Pebble. Uh, the Pebble, immediately after I got it, was a no-go. Not enough power to even get up a hill at times. Or, you know, if you were stopped on a hill and try to get going again, it was almost impossible. Uh, it was too big, too bulky, couldn't take it on the trails. They say you can, but I mean, it would just be rude to take that thing on the trails. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that one. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just like in a small community and just kind of want to use it for getting around town. The Pebble might be your your, your get. Um, if you, I've ridden uh, two real recumbents and recumbents for the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. Uh, you know, I had the Velomobile, which is a three wheel, it's a trike. Uh, so I was comfortable as soon as I hopped on this. Uh, I don't think the learning curve is all that great on this one. It's a lot easier 
uh, smaller curve than say just an analog uh, recumbent two wheel uh, because you have the electric uh, power it, it kind of helps you get used to the balance of it you can get going pretty quick on it um, other than that let's walk through it uh, I'll tell you the things I've really enjoyed about it as I walk through it the things uh, that I've done to it already uh, which is one of the pros real quick before I get into it one of the big pros is that yeah, it looks complicated and everything, but this is everything's off the shelf, like pretty much. Uh, and if it's not off the shelf, uh, you know, reach out to Tig uh, Fabrizio, and I'm sure he, he's been very accommodating, answering my questions and emails, and we've had a few back and forths. We still need to connect over uh, a video call uh, here soon uh, to go over a few things. I'm going to be replacing the batteries on this uh, because this was a used model, and I bought brand new batteries. That way, I have the full capacity and range of the batteries. Um, and uh, so I need to figure out exactly how to get in there and when I do that I'm gonna do a video of it to post and so if anyone else gets an electrum and they want to replace their batteries there'll be a video tutorial to show you how to do that so yeah uh, let's get into it oh it, yeah so everything's off the shelf like I had to replace a tube off the shelf I had to uh, what else did I have to do oh I had to put new gas struts on which I'll show you I just ordered them from Amazon boom when I first got it, uh, one of the uh, turn signals was broken, so I replaced the uh, three of them because one of them looked pretty new. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't feel the need to replace one of them, but replaced three of the uh, four turn signals, and it was super easy. Uh, and I'm not overly, um, I'm not a master of electronics by any means or putting that together. I can solder and things like that, but you know, I, I uh, there's something else I had to do uh, that I will get to when we walk through it. So all in all, it's been a great bike for the last month. Of course, once I have even more time with it, I'll do another video on, on am I still liking it, right? How, 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 what problems have I run into? Uh, but so far after a month, of course I've had no problems, but this bike also has 8,000 kilometers. I believe that's around 5,000 miles. Um, I don't really know the conversion. I'm not great with it. My math might not be mathing there. Um, but yeah, so this already had a lot of, a lot of miles on it, on it. Uh, so it's been broken in, uh, but, uh, it's held up too. You know, it's still in really good shape. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the shape it is with as many miles that is on this bike. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so those are, those are kind of the, the quick hits. So let's uh, flip the camera around and I'll get off it and we'll look at the Electrum. So, uh, going, starting with the front of the Electrum, one thing, um, also to note before I get fully into the video, this is his um, model, uh, an older model we'll say. So I think this was 2022 when he came out with this style and, and put this bike together. He has the newer model that's out there and available. That's what most people are gonna be able to purchase. He offered me this used uh, and I took advantage of that offer. I really appreciate it uh, that he did that for me. Uh, I really actually, um, there's a lot more on this body style than I like on the new one. Uh, but as I go through that, I'll, I'll point out the things I like on the new one, not so that, that this one is okay. So the front fairing is, has a little more bubble to it, right? The new one's going to be flatter, which I like that look. It looks sleeker, looks, uh, looks more put together. The front light is one light bar now, uh, which may fix the problem I've been having. And oftentimes when I turn on the lights, um, even when I've let it sit for a while, uh, what will happen is when I come back to turn the lights back on, uh, they'll go into different modes. And Tig warned me about that, and I just have to cycle through it. So sometimes I have to sit there and cycle through it. Hopefully that's fixed with the new light that he's using, because there are times like I run into the store real quick and I come back out. I've learned to leave the lights on, but at the same time, I don't like leaving the lights on because then it makes people think it's on and they can try to take off on it. And I don't want that to happen either. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I usually turn them off, but then I have to cycle through it to get the lights. So one's not flashing and one's on and some, then it will be low, high, and then high, low, and then high, high. And that's what you're trying to find is the high beam, high beam. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's not a, con per se it's just kind of a little bit of annoyance but again on the new model it's one light bar across the front uh and it, it, it maybe it's it, he's has solved that problem 
Um, why I'm in the front here, uh, I'll show you right here, there's a hinge, and this is the hinge right here holding on this front bubble that lifts it up and down. Uh, this one in Granite, again, has 8,000 kilometers on it. It's a little uh, loosey-goosey. It's, it's still tight, but it's it, it's got a little kind of wiggle to it now. Uh, but, um, and I, I think, I believe on the new one, looking at the images, he's really beefed up that hinge. Like it's got several bolts across the front of it. So I believe he's using a heavier duty hinge now, which would take care of the issue that when your bike starts getting a lot of miles on it and a lot of wear and tear and things like that, you're going to have a, a beefier hinge that's gonna last longer. So uh, that is a good thing to note. Um, let's see here, what else on here? On the new one, I don't believe he has the running lights on the side, which is unfortunate. He mentioned, you know, it's a lot of extra work to do those running lights. But what I really like about those is that it really helps you uh, with visibility. This is really visible to begin with. Like I, you sit up really high, almost level eye level with like smaller cars. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but you know, the, the more lights, especially at night and riding at night, the better, uh, you know, whatever you can hopefully get the attention of the driver from staring at his phone, not to stare at his phone, um, you know, it, it just it's beneficial right so i do like those lights i don't believe them on the they're on the new one uh you know after about eight thousand mile miles or kilometers uh, i've noticed on the uh, center stand it's starting to wear through on the bottom uh, so hopefully i can get a replacement uh center stand at some point when i need it uh, from tig when this one finally gives but i've noticed a, a lot of wear it's getting really really thin on the bottom feet and the new one has little rubber rubber feet, which is pretty cool. So that's about all there is with the front that's really different that um, I wanted to point out with the hinge and things like that. Other than that, solid. So let's open it up. Also, I think these cowls are a little longer than on the new one. I think they cut off a little shorter now. He doesn't have this cowling around it, I believe. I believe it's just like the bubble. Uh, and then he has um, kind of like this centerpiece that holds the the computer um so let me open it up here so the uh, first modifications that i've made here recently and actually just today so originally there was two little washers here that sat on this metal bar across here that's supposed to sit on these little rate risers so this helps uh hold up a little higher bring it down a little lower kind of adjust the height well because of where i have the front um, bubble sitting here, it didn't, it wouldn't, the little washers, these didn't even touch it. Like they were too far forward. So this whole thing was resting on this part of the fairing, uh, which was causing some shorts and lights. So what I did was I cut a, a few pieces of um, uh, sheet, uh, metal sheeting, and then put some uh, uh, neoprene foam on it. And now, as you can see by the indentations, um, it's it's sitting on there. So I can actually use these rate risers and, and help doing those micro adjustments. So that would be one thing. Again, I don't know because I haven't seen inside the new one with it up. I haven't seen like this complete of a walkthrough of those. Um, and maybe I'll go out and visit TIG in Canada and uh, go actually check out the brand new ones uh, sometime and do a video for you. But yeah, so I just... Uh, pop riveted a couple pieces of metal on there so it can extend that and it's not sitting on this lip of carbon fiber uh, and it's not putting extra wear and pressure on this so that i put on hopefully he's fixed that in the new one to where you know no matter where you put, adjust this uh, back and forth that this is always these are always sitting on something solid the next thing uh so with this bolt here right this if you loosen it and in this channel if you you can bring the 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 fairing uh back and forward so it helps adjust it up and down uh this this affects like where your legs is if it's going to hit this while you're right while while you're riding um so uh i have mine sitting right here hopefully again this is one thing about this version of the electrum that was 
it's a little finicky. It's kind of challenging doing this by yourself. Uh, hopefully there's, uh, he's, he's been able to improve, improve this a little bit to where it makes it a little easier to slide this back and forward uh, and really set. Uh, you know, it would be nice even if you had a long pin that, and then they were just holes, you know, several holes instead of just one long channel have several hole, hole, holes where you're sliding the pin all the way through and then screwing it down. And then you can pull the whole pin out, move it down two notches. That way you can kind of find where you want it. But if you just had hole after hole after hole, after, you know what I'm saying, uh, instead of just trying to slide it. I think it would make the adjusting this part so much easier. Um, I did put new gas struts on. Uh, these are 100 Newton meters. Um, for the struts because it's really windy where I'm at. It can get really windy and I've had a few times where I've had tailwind or crosswinds and the hood wanted to, the fairing kind of wanted to lift a little bit and I had a big gust one day and I, I was really afraid it was going to pull the hood up but I just kind of pulled it down a little bit and I was fine. I hadn't ever had it fly up so uh, Tig recommended getting uh, struts that had a little more strength to them than what came on it and I've got to say it, it's it's really nice like it will it will pop open itself right uh, if i if i let it, uh, it's, it they're really strong and I, I i really like them so let me open that back up uh yeah so i replaced those gas struts but again i ordered them from amazon put them on myself uh you know it, it, so far everything i've done uh like putting in the tail lights i can get back into here all of this comes off the side panels opened up so you can work on your chains and on your on your you know cranks and things like that i mean it it's more accessible to the parts the moving pieces than say when you have a velomobile because it's all enclosed you've got to climb in some of them some of them have little access holes but you know sometimes it's kind of difficult uh to get into uh so here's here's your um power switch for your lights and then power for the computer and the bike to, to, to get the motors on. He made them separate. I like that idea. I, I, I do get a good use out of that. So I hope he kept that on current models. Uh, one thing to note is um, when I was drilling the holes uh, for to uh, pop rivet these on, evidently I had <laughs> drilled, also caught the electric wire. Uh, it was running through this, this aluminum uh, piece and I had severed it in the middle so this side of the light stopped working so I had to solder uh, the water, wires back together I had to pull it out and now it's running underneath and I just have it taped up underneath there uh, but again it was super easy uh, and I got it all working again uh, so those are I think those are really the only two things or the two things I've really majorly done to it besides uh, repairing the lights I did have to take the rear tire off and fix a flat um, I had a flat tube, but again, I just bought the tube. I actually bought a moped tube uh, from a local uh, motorcycle shop, and that, that took care of it. So uh, I the room here is plenty of room. I, I haven't had any foot strikes or anything, any issues with clearance of my feet. I have about a size uh, 10 shoe, so I've had no problem there. Again, this is adjustable, which helps raise and lower this. You can adjust these things to have this sit up a little higher uh so you know it's it's all adjustable for different sized riders and, and tig has a certain uh, size range that he recommends uh you know you've got to be in it right now currently because the way he's building these one off uh you have to fit within a certain size to make sure it will fit you so other things about the electrum super comfy seat at first it wasn't because it was a brand new pad, but now that it's kind of broken in, it's become very, very comfortable. The steering is fantastic. The, the hand wind guards have uh, been great. Really actually helped keep my hands warm on the colder mornings. Uh, I believe on the new one, all of this piece is, is really clean and it connects really clean now. Um, it, it, it Like this is Velcroed on. I'm not sure how the, this uh, cowling is... Um, connected now but it uh, online and in the images it looks really really smooth and clean uh the things about the controls uh one thing that i wish that it had that i would like him to consider is i know he didn't connect these lights this switch to do anything 
However, it would be nice to have that switch uh, turn the lights from a slow blink to solid because when you're on the road during the day, I think it just alerts drivers of you more. Uh, and it's always kind of nice to have that extra visibility. Uh, right here, there's some space. I would love to see some kind of switch that will allow you to switch between your different assist modes or levels. You know, what, you know the, the, there's three settings you can set on the computer and you can kind of cycle through different ones depending if you're on the road or not or on a trail, you want a little less power, whatever it is, uh, it would be nice to have a, a button to switch that. Now you can switch it from uh, the computer and I'll show you that later, uh, you know, but when I have gloves on, it's really hard because you have to hold down one button and you have to hit the other. So while you're riding, it, it's with gloves on, it's difficult. When I don't have gloves on, it's not a problem, uh, but it would be nice if it was uh, a little button uh, right here, really easily accessible would be, would be nice. Uh, braking power is fantastic. Haven't had any issues with that. Uh, let's see here. Let me move my helmet. Also, if you get uh, an Electrum, or I recommend this for any rider with a smooth helmet. This is called Brake Free. It's inertia uh, sensor. So when you slow down, a brake light pops on. It's, they're really great. And I tell you, I really notice a difference from the courtesy or not courtesy of drivers. So let me move this out of the way. Let me go ahead and climb onto the Electrum, step over, pull down the hood, the fairing. So your computer sets here, like I said, um, I don't have my keys with me, but to, to change your, your level of assist, you hold down this button and then select that button. And there it's easy, but with my gloves on, it's a little hard. Uh, something I really like is when you have your turn signals, and I don't know if the new one has this, but this tells me my turn signal's on, so I'm not an idiot riding down the road because there's no beeping sound or clicking sound when they are on. Uh, so that's a really nice feature that I really hope uh, he kept uh, in the, the new version. The new version, again, this, this kind of dashboard, if you will, is really clean and really smooth and slick. Uh, he's really cleaned up the look of that. Uh, I love the USB port. I have used it. Um, one thing I would like to see here is I would like to see an accessory bar, like maybe have a just a piece of, uh, of, of tubing, uh, aluminum tubing that comes off here. Uh, here, the, the computer is mounted and I believe like carbon fibered in or it's mounted on the cow. I, I don't know how he's screwing that on and, and keeping this steady, but it would be nice if there was like just an, a piece of aluminum. You don't want to put it in front of here, but like maybe off this way, that you could maybe be able to place like a phone mount um, or you know something like a quad lock so you can have your phone up if you want like a GPS, you need directions. Although you could put something like that, you know, along this cowling and, and, and mount your phone right there. Your feet's not gonna get in the way, uh, as you can see, depending how big your phone is, I guess. Um, but you could put it there and you'd be able to see it. But it would be nice to have something off here to, to kind of mount my phone over here or over here or heck even if you want to be able to mount an action camera up here and have it sit like right here uh, so you can take videos you know just just a, a food for thought for tig really that would be kind of nice uh, let's see so we'll hop out of here so that kind of takes you through that the, the cycle computer is he's using a grin and let me tell you there's a lot of things you can do with it uh, i'm still figuring it out i want to change a couple of the the assist settings uh, I'm trying to figure out, I figured out like speed settings. There's a cruise control setting, which is really nice. However, I I quite haven't figured out like how do I set the power in this one versus the power in this one. So I, I'm, I'm looking at what's set now and trying to figure out what's different between each one. So then I can go back in and adjust where I want to. But again, you email TIG and he responds. Uh, I know he's super busy right now. He's getting another Electrum uh, ready to ship out and he's getting other ones built for other people. So uh, I don't wanna take up too much of his time. Uh, and unfortunately last week we were supposed to connect and I was really, really sick. Um, this on the new one, of course, as you will know, it's flat. It no longer has this, uh, this round or, or well back or whatever you would fast back, whatever you wanna call it. Personally, I like this so much better than the flat back. If I was to order a new one, I might beg and beg, uh, you know, 
TIG to make one of these styles for me because it holds so much more stuff inside in your dry secured, uh, you know, traveling case. I just, the flat is great. You could stack stuff up on it, but you know, having this kind of storage where it's nice and dry and safe and it's lockable, I'd rather have that and all that extra storage than, than the flat. Plus, I believe this probably gives you a little more aerodynamic aspect than the flat back. Uh, so anyway, if I, if I ever bought a brand new one, I would probably beg TIG to make me one like this. I really like uh, this a lot. Uh, the Also, you know, if you were to put uh, two extra batteries in here, they, they would sit right in here. And that would take up some of your storage. But having this larger back storage, you can stack things inside. So, you know, when you have extra batteries loaded in there, yeah, it takes up room, but I still have a lot of room. Whereas on the flat ones, you put those batteries in there, you've really lost a lot of your packing room. Uh, so, you know, that, that could be problematic. One thing, uh, you know, I asked Tig, I'm like, what happens when you get a rear flat on the, on the road? And he said, don't. <laughs> jokingly right it it is that is the hardest thing about this bike is how do you change the tire the front tire is pretty easy because when you have it on the stand you know you could you know you have it high enough you can you know kind of get it off or or help have someone if hopefully someone friendly stops by and they can lift it up as you take the tire off and having it on the stand you, you know you can still you know take the tire off and it could sit there on the stand you don't have to worry about how it's going to hold up because when it's on the stand, the back weight is on the rear tire, you need to be able to put something underneath the Electrum. Uh, you know, you just got to get creative. You got to MacGyver something on the trail if that was to happen. So instead, I always I always check my pressure, my tire pressures uh, from time to time, just making sure they're good and full. I also put slime, to, slime in the tire, uh, the tube, uh, to, to help with any small punctures. Uh, so hopefully, I will never have to worry about that on the trail. I am looking into like some camping blocks, you know, stackable blocks that maybe something lightweight, like a really nice, solid, solid, heavy duty foam that could hold up to the weight of the Electrum that you can stack up to get higher and higher. Like maybe like each one's like two inches thick uh, and then I can cut them down to so they're not too big and then I could just keep them stored in there. So if I ever do get a flat, I'm a worrier, you know, I'm always trying to avoid or mitigate my risk. <laughs> it's my day job is mitigating risk. So of course I'm, I'm always worried about it in my personal life. Uh, but yeah, so I plan on doing some action video too, uh, in the future so you can see it in action. Uh, but all in all, this has been a really fantastic bike. Uh, other than the things I pointed out that I hope I see different, or hopefully he's improved in the new version of the Electrum. Um, you know, hopefully he, he has those updated. Uh, one other thing. So the tail lights aren't running daylights. I would love to see these run red the whole time, uh, and then turn turn signals, uh, when you're turning. And then also when you break, they brighten up right now. There's like only one strip that, br that turns to a brake light to warn drivers of braking. I haven't seen any issues when people are behind me and I'm braking. They seem to stop and seem to give me a lot more stopping distance than I do on a regular get on a regular bicycle or even on my motorcycle when I would ride a motorcycle. So, and also that might have to do with the brake free that I have on the back of my helmet. Again, that helps out. But that would be nice if it could be wired in a way where these can actually always be red. Brake light would would turn brake, and when you turn on your turn signal, it would trump the brake light and the red running light uh, because these LEDs have that capability. So uh, that would be a, a really nice feature to have. So uh, if you have any questions about the Electrum, if there's something specifically you're like, hey, could I take a look at this? Hey, can you tell me more about this? Uh, let me know. I will do another video or I'll answer your questions. Uh, hopefully the questions I have about the changes from this one version in the new one, uh, hopefully Tig will watch this sometime and, and weigh in on some of that stuff. Uh, or if he tells me uh, what's changed and what hasn't changed, I'm happy to report that as well uh, because I plan on doing more videos uh, with the Electrum. I've got, again, I will say it. I said it at the top of the video. 
this has been an excellent bike so far. Again, only a month in, so it's maybe I'm still in the honeymoon phase of it, but I'm making up reasons to go places. I'm like, I don't really, I've got food at home. Maybe I'll run and grab something to eat. Maybe I'll run up to the store and just grab something real quick. Uh, you know, or I really look forward to commuting to work now. You know, it's actually enjoyable to go there and to come home. You know, I take the long route home just because it's so much fun to ride. And not only is it fun to ride, the capability of distance on this with really good batteries um, and your pedaling power can get you like close to 100 miles of range. I believe at least 100 miles of range is, is what he reports. And that's not 100 miles of range on the lowest settings, right? That's like you can do good power and have that 28 mile per hour speed and get your 60, 80, 90 miles out of it, which is going to be better than any bicycle on the market, any e-bike on the market. Uh, that is fantastic range. Uh, for a while, I had an electric assist in my Wow, uh, my Velomobile, and I would get crazy range with a small, a much smaller battery, but that is very aerodynamic. But the downfall is you're fully enclosed. You get hot in the summer. It's not as, you know, it's not as at, like this where I could just hop on with what I'm wearing and go. Uh, I'd have to gear up for that. I'd have to wear cycling clothes. Uh, I'd, I'd sweat a lot more, or even if I wasn't sweating, um, you know, I'd get pulled over every now and then because they can't see your feet moving. Um, yeah, so uh, based on my, I, and I still love Velomobiles. They're a lot of fun, but the practicality of it, uh, you, using on trails uh, or getting on and off the trails uh, was just uh, difficult at times. Uh, you know, some trails have right degree turn, right angle turns and uh, Velomobiles do not like right, angled turns uh you know this handles it a little better still a little bit of challenging because you know it is a longer wheel based recumbent but you can manage it uh a little easier oh last thing i want to mention i was so surprised i was worried about this was going to be really heavy but this is i it's not as light as my velomobile was uh i have bigger batteries in it so uh, but it is surprisingly light. It's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I have a little bit of an incline coming into my garage and I knew I was going to back it in. So I would have to walk it back while sitting on it. And I was like, ah, I really hope it's not like really heavy. Cause I think the website or he's mentioned before, like it's a hundred pounds or so. I'd be shocked if it's a hundred pounds. I can actually lift the back of this thing off up to put those blocks that I was talking about earlier underneath it or something to prop it up in order to, uh, you know, lift the back end high enough to get the back tire off. It, it, it was, it's heavy with the batteries and everything, but overall it just feels really light. Um, I'm able to back it up into the garage on a little bit of an incline uh, by myself, no problem. And, and I was just surprised by the weight is not as heavy as I, I, I thought it was going to be. Really, a lot of the weight is in those batteries. They're big, hefty batteries. I ordered brand new batteries, and, and I got the package. And, oh, boy, uh, when I lifted that up into the house, I was like, wow, these are the batteries. A lot of this uh, bike's weight, for sure. Um, uh, but uh, I got new batteries because, again, this was a used one. Uh, he had done a test on the batteries that are in this, and they're holding about a little over 80% of their uh, original charge, but that's after 8,000 kilometers of riding and charge cycles. Uh, so that's that's good. So if you take care of your batteries, you're going to get longevity out of your batteries, and you're going to get many, many, many miles. I didn't have to replace them. I've been able to get places where I can get to. Uh, I just felt I, I had the money to be able to do it now, so I bought brand new batteries. I'll still use these old batteries if I ever want to go on a longer trip and maybe go bike camping somewhere. Uh, I can you can put the two extra batteries back in, daisy chain it into the others, and now you have four batteries. Uh, so instead of getting like close to 90 miles, I could maybe get 130 miles. So 140 miles. I, I don't know. I don't want to drain the battery completely completely and be stranded somewhere to really test it. I'm, I'm not that guy. Uh, so if you want to do that, maybe if I ever get like a, a little electric generator and I have a friend that could uh, come rescue me with my electric generator to charge up to get enough charge home, maybe I'll test out really how far uh, this can go on one charge. And I'll do a video on that if I do. Uh, that actually sounds like fun. Maybe I will buy an electric generator. Hmm.
So I've already said it uh, in true Midwestern style. I've said, okay, this is it. And then I kept going. Uh, but seriously, I think that is, that's all I have to say about the Electrum right now. So happy writing to you. Reach out to Fabrizio. Uh, go to electrum.ca. I'll put the link in the, in the, in the description. Uh, it's a really fantastic bike. He's really developed something special. I really wish him the best of luck and hopefully this gains some success and there's a few a few more of them out there and you see them around different states and different locations maybe more than one in the in the same town uh yes they're pricey but the more he can get built and sold the more he can reach to manufacturing uh certain aspects of it so he's not doing them all by hand hopefully bringing down the costs a little bit i don't think these bikes will ever be super cheap i mean the batteries alone are going to probably run you around 1500 bucks but uh, they're good batteries, you know, they're top of the line. He's not doing cheap things here. You know, if he has someone that can, if he can manufacture the carbon fiber pieces, maybe it brings down a little bit. Maybe he's able to get the price down two to $3,000 and what the current cost of the Electrum is. And that puts it, you know, closer to that ten or $9,000 range. Uh, if he can get it to ten or $9,000 range, it's a no-brainer bike here. This is all day long I'd pay that money for a bike for what you're getting here and the range you get and the type of vehicle replacement it really can be. Um, yeah, so good luck to him. Uh, please give a like uh, on the video. You don't have to follow me. It's fine. I don't do a ton of videos and I, the ones I do are kind of here, there and everywhere about all kinds of different stuff. But please give a like because if you give a like, then it will get in someone else's feed that's interested and have been looking at electric bikes and things like that. And maybe they see it. And maybe they go, oh, I want one of these. Uh, let's help spread the word of, of alternative transportation uh, and, and, and get this kind of stuff out and see more of this kind of innovation. Uh, Tig, congratulations on the, uh, the excellent concept here.